Well, what's up guys? I'm Sean from SRK Cycles. Is the 2010 Honda Goldwing the last great American-made touring bike? Cue the intro. So the Goldwing, or what they called three, Project 371, back in 1974, came out as first generation in the US market in 1974. What Honda was trying to do was create a smooth running, flat four boxer engine and stick it in a motorcycle. I don't think they really had the big scope of what they were trying to create at that time. But what they did was amazing and kind of changed the way we look at touring bikes forever. So the first gen Goldwings were made in Japan. But starting in 1980 in Maysville, Ohio, they started making, sorry, with the second gen, they started making the Goldwings in America. And they made the Goldwings in America up until 2010. In 2010, they produced the last American-made Honda Goldwing, which is this body style, this generation right here. What's interesting about that is they didn't start remaking the Goldwings until 2012. In 2011, they just didn't make any Goldwings. Right, let's do the words of wis oh, I'm, I'm, okay, there we go. wisdom. Romans 8, 6, for the mindset on flesh is death, but the mindset on the spirit is life and peace. So you're probably wondering by now, What's so great about the Goldwing? It's kind of goofy looking. It's big. It's basically a car with two wheels. And it's kind of an old man bike, right? Well, let me tell you a couple of the awesome things about the Goldwing. One, it's one of the only motorcycles to ever come with a reverse. And I, if you guys can think of any other bikes that I haven't thought about, uh, please comment below. But the only other bike I can think about is the, uh, the BMW K1200 that also had reverse. And you might see it on like a Ural or some bike that was made with a sidecar. But you know, Urals are so ridiculously unreliable. Let's not even count those. So the Goldwing has four speeds and then overdrive. And they had that up until 2018, 2019, when the new Goldwing came out, they never needed a, a six gear. Some people were like, oh, I'm not gonna buy a Goldwing because it only has six gear, so we'll go buy a Harley Davidson. And that just doesn't make any sense. It, it doesn't matter how many gears you have. It's not like, this bike will go a whole lot faster than a Harley or a Davidson will in top speed. So that, that's just kind of an irrelevant point. But I think the new Goldwing is actually a seven speed. I know the automatics are a seven speed, I think. But so they finally got out of the five speed and they, it's either a six or seven speed in the new body style Goldwings. The cool thing about the Goldwing Reverse, it's the fifth generation, it's super simple. So what it actually does, the way it works, is it reverses the polarity of the starter. So you would turn the key, you press this uh, reverse button, and then you press the starter button, and it's a starter motor reversing the polarity and just moving backwards. And what that does is it helps, you know, let, let, let's say, I mean, it is a heavy bike. You know, it's a 900 some pound bike. So if you were uh, maybe parked and you were leaning like this, you got to back up, you got a passenger on the back, you got to get out of a situation, maybe you have short legs, you know, you can't get the leverage to actually push the bike back. It opens up a lot of opportunities for a lot of people to ride a much bigger bike than what they normally would feel comfortable with, with that reverse gear. Now don't get me wrong, the Goldwing is big. It is a very large bike. It's so big that it's got fold-in mirrors, just like a car would. Now there's only a handful of motorcycles that you can buy that the person in the back is gonna feel as snug and as comfortable as riding on a Goldwing. And you can also get like armrests for them so they just feel completely tucked in, which is great for you because they're not all on top of you, which maybe is not good for you. Maybe if you're start just dating someone, maybe you're like, nah, maybe I'll take the uh, Super Sport. And they're just like, don't know another dear life and you're really enjoying that once you've been married for a while and you're trying to actually ride the bike then <laughs> something like this is great because hey they're just kind of along for the ride they're doing their own thing they're on like they're on their phone chatting up they feel safe they, they feel comfortable they're all enclosed they're not putting any pressure on you or grabbing you or anything like that but even though it is a big bike it does not feel as big because of the low center of gravity boxer six cylinder motor because normally a v-twin would be you know, have, have parts up here. This engine's all, you know, pretty low. So when you're actually, so when you're riding the bike, it doesn't, I mean, it feels as nimble as light as anything else. This is the road's drying up. Maybe we might get a good zero to 60. Uh, the clutch on these gold wings, even though they're big, it's a big bike, it's a very light clutch. Shifting, very, very light shifting. It just throws in the gear, it just feels perfect. There. All right, now considering that's the, the, lo the slowest launch anyone has ever done. Even in the wet, I had no wheel spin. So be mindful of that. But these bikes move, these bikes can definitely get to 
at the speed limit, whatever that may be. When you're cruising on one of these, I do like, I do like these uh, these pegs. There are better pegs out there. Uh, these kind of, and they're kind of dumb looking. Um, there's also pegs that hang down. They hang low, like down here, um, and they feel really cool. Could you stretch your legs out? Now you can't turn, but they they, they fold up in a turn. That's probably one of the coolest pegs I've ever had. But anytime you're on a big trip, if you want to move your legs around. You want to get oh, you know, putting them up here is so much better, and it just feel, you know, just moving them around. That that variety that you can get, and you know, same thing with driving a car. When you put it on cruise control, you can reposition your legs. It just makes a big difference. All right, so let me uh, let me go back to what I just said. A six-cylinder engine in a motorcycle. This is like like everyone's every kid's wildest dream to have a to have a, to have a, a flat six in a motor. It, it's insane. It's a huge engine. 1800 cc. So it's probably bigger than the engine that was in your first car. They're pushing over 118 horsepower, which if you want to compare that to like a Harley Davidson, this is on the same level and the same performance of like a Harley Davidson uh, 110 CVO bike. I mean, it, it, it's a quick bike. Even though it's huge, this thing can really move. But the Goldwing really is the, one of the ultimate cruising, touring motorcycles for the highway. You know, it just does, it does highway speeds effortlessly. It's, it's very quick. It's a very quick bike. And it's very big. It has all the creature comforts that you could possibly want. And when you start hitting the elements, you know what I mean? When you start hitting rain, you just kind of get a little bit lower. Flip that fell up. I mean, you got your radio and it really is a, it's a good way to ride. You have tons of storage, so you're not putting a backpack on your back and holding on your gear that way. You know everything's secure and everything's locked up. Now, the 5th the Gen Goldwing used, used the exact same motor that they put in the Honda Rune, but where the Honda Rune had one big giant radiator right in the front, uh, the Goldwing actually had two smaller radiators on both sides. That's what these vents are. That's not an intake, that's the radiator. Now, the first thing when you jump on a Goldwing, you get, you get like button, you get distressed about how many buttons, you get overwhelmed about how many buttons there are. There's a lot of buttons. Most of these, this is a, for the comm system, for the radio. Like, you, don't, you don't have to deal with any of these buttons. You don't, this is for the, uh, this is for your memory, memory up and down, like memory uh, suspension settings, up and down, that's how you can adjust the lights, that's your, okay, never touch the never touch the hazard button on a Goldwing and I'm gonna tell you why especially the older Goldwing. I mean the new Goldwing is fine don't worry about it but on an older Goldwing just don't press the button and here's why because no one presses the button no one has ever chances are no one has ever pressed that button ever because why does a motorcycle really need hazard lights it just it, it doesn't happen you pull over far enough on the side of the road, it's just, it's very rare you're ever gonna need it. So, those buttons get, they, because they're never getting used, they get stuck when they do get used. So when you push that button in, it just stays with the hazards on, then you gotta like press it a thousand times, you gotta spray like dialectic grease inside there, and then finally it pops out, and then you wish that no one would ever press it again. But it's funny because people who are like, hey, look at that motor's like, I'm gonna start pressing, bloop, 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 pressing buttons. That's what happens. Now, you could say that the Honda Goldwing is just a big car. Well, in a way, it has all the creature comforts of a really nice convertible. In a way, it's even better than a real nice convertible. This has heated seats, you could have that in a convertible. It says heated grips, chances are you don't have that in your car. This also has a comm system that you can plug in. You and your passenger can both plug into it and you can talk to each other, which you can't do that in a, in a convertible. I guess you could just talk to each other by looking, but who wants to do that? And then up here, are your uh, CB volume, CB channel, CB squelch, volume for your radio, high beams. And so um, all the buttons that you would normally would expect are right there. Cruise control is right there, reverse is right there. And then you have a bunch of other stuff all scattered around it that you don't actually need to know how to use. But you know, you'll eventually, because you're like, I want to use, figure out how to use the radio. I never use the radio because I have a radio in my helmet. So another thing that really sets the wing apart is the pegs. Now normally on a touring bike, you know, or like a cruiser bike, you'd be expecting to be out here. You know, not even that high, you know, somewhere around here with, with floorboards. You'll notice that with the gold wing, I'm sitting more like a, like a sport touring or even more like an adventure bike where my knees are in front of my feet. And you know, some, some guys feel like, make, feel like a little cramped up, 
I think it's perfect. I feel real comfortable in, in, this, in this position. They don't have floorboards. They got pegs, because you need to be able to, for the floorboard, you couldn't really move and shift up and down. Some people put floorboards on here. I, I almost can't drive it. Uh, it must be like really short people to do that. But having these, having these pegs higher up and further back gives you a more sporty feel, but also, but you're also less likely to drag your pegs when you're taking a real sharp turn. Also, because the handlebars kind of come to you, all your weight is either on your legs or on your butt. None of the weight, like a sport bike, you know, is, is on your arms. The handlebars come right to you and you just rest your hands on them and then you use them. You're not, you're not holding on to the bike, you're just resting your hands, very relaxing. So even though these are big bikes, once you're moving, once you're moving a mile an hour, it instantly feels like the smallest, most nimble, it has no weight. Now it's got no weight, I don't notice any weight. I'm not like struggling to fight it or anything like that. And gold wings just feel great in the corners. They just wanna just keep on laying down even more. If you're on a big old sweeping, sweeping corner, you feel real confident just getting, getting lower and lower and lower. So while Harley Davidson lovers love Harley Davidson because of the sound, because of the rumble, in the exact same way, and, and Harley, Harley's, you know, apparently never gonna change that, although every Harley engine has been a little smoother since they've been making them. Gold wings are the exact same way. People love gold wings because they're incredibly smooth and they're super quiet. You can, just, you can experience the ride, you can hear the wind, you can, it's not just the noise of the bike. And, and, and it's never gonna change. It's always gonna continue getting smoother. I don't know how they can get it even smoother, but it's gonna continue getting smoother. And the only other bike that I can think of that might rival the smoothness of this bike is the other V6 motorcycle out there, which would be uh, the BMW K 1600. A lot of people think that riding a motorcycle that's quiet is dangerous. It's just not true. There's no facts, there's no statistics to prove that because gold wings have been basically silent, you know, for the past 50, 40 years. You know, this thing has no noise. The wind is louder than, than this. You can get smaller and larger windscreens. A lot of times the, uh, the F6Bs, which is a little more of a based out gold wing with no tour pack, a lot of times they will have uh, smaller windshields. Now the gold wing's got a real sleek design. You notice there's no handles, there's no key spots on the side. It's all just nice and sleek. Well, the actual releases for the trunk, or for the trunk and the saddlebags are actually down here in these little pool levers. Pull them open, pop them. Nice and hidden, and the dash will tell you up there whether your whether your your trunk or your side bags are open. Uh, I've seen a lot of bikes that have um, have scrape marks right on the saddle bag, and you're like, how'd that happen? And what happened was, some guy the bag fell open, and some opened a little farther than this, and then someone was taking a turn and drug that bag right on the ground. It's not gonna happen with a gold wing. A lot of you guys put those foam grips on top of these uh, these grips. I don't like that. I like the smaller. Feels a little lighter. I don't know. I don't like that big, fat. Like it just feels like you're holding like a PVC pipe, and that's not, not not a fan of that. But a lot of people are. It's cheap, easy to do. Guys, if, and I'm finally starting to. The heated grips are only on three, but they're finally starting to soak through my gloves. Guys, if you were wondering what kind of gloves I'm wearing, these are the M1 Moto gloves. These are the baddest gloves on the planet. One of the only motorcycle gloves that's lined with Kevlar. See that yellow stuff inside? That's actually Kevlar. Um, feels soft on your skin, but it's incredibly durable, almost impossible to cut. And you need this type of protection on your hands because if you were like anyone else, you probably use your hands for work. Check this out. Click on the link below at uh, bikesandbeardsgear.com. All right, guys, that wraps it up. It's a beautiful bike. We have a couple of these for sale. Check out the srkcycles.com. We ship bikes all over the country, and we'll see you guys later. Remember, it is not what you're riding, but where you're going. We'll see you guys later.